Now let's continue. This complex of nickel cyanide as a ligand. Now as it is given it is square planar and diamagnetic. So I have already told you there is a need of pairing here because uh, we need one 3D orbital empty for the hybridization DSP2. Fine. So as a result of pairing you will see there is no unpaired electron left in 3D. So now 4s, 4p As a result, we need only 1d, 1s and 2p orbitals to accommodate 4 orbital, 4 cyanide ligands. So cyanide will donate their electron pairs in these vacant orbitals. So I have told you that uh, before accepting the electrons, these orbitals has to undergo hybridization so that they are all same. So hybridization taking place is the dsp2, the shape will be scale planar and lastly we will see the number of unpaired electron in this case will be zero so this explains your question that the compass is diamagnetic in nature as well as it is scale planar fine so let's explain this is the uh, index problem 9.5 ncrt so let's explain the second case here that uh, complex of uh, nickel in which cyanide is the ligand uh, sorry, uh, chloride ion is the ligand and that complex is tetrahedral as well as paramagnetic. So again, I am taking nickel plus 2 oxidation state, independent ion. I have written the configuration already we have written. So just the orbital representation 3D 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 as 0 for nickel ion. Right? Now in this case, for accommodating four chloride ions here, now you see, it's very simple as the question in the question, it is given it is tetrahedral, so the hybridization will be sp3 in this particular case, so s and all p3 are empty, so no d orbital will be involved in the hybridization and the representation of electron will remain as such, there will be no change. 1s and 3p orbital will involve in hybridization in which chloride ion will donate their lone pairs to form 4 nickel chloride coordinate bonds we get 4 sp3 empty hybridized orbital in which chloride ion donate their electron pairs fine so here the shape will be tetrahedral Fine. And if you see, there are two no unpaired electrons, so it is paramagnetic also. So this explains your question. So let's take another problem from NCRT. We have similar question, explanation of certain complex property using VBT theory. So this is the problem number 9.6. According to this problem, we have nickel Cl4 2 negative is paramagnetic while nickel tetracarbon in nickel is diamagnetic though both, this very special question, very very important, both are tetrahedral so we have to explain this using VBT right? why is it so that both of them are tetrahedral still one of them is paramagnetic while other is diamagnetic right? so let's see what happens here uh, I have already explained this case so I will not repeat this case I have already explained that this is a tetrahedral as well as paramagnetic let's take the second case here so it is case of uh, tetracarbon and nickel. Now in this particular complex, if you calculate oxidation state of nickel, it comes to be zero. So that means nickel is combining with four carbon monoxide ligand in its ground state, that is in its atomic state. This is a special thing about this, right? So, but here nickel was in plus two oxidation state. Here its oxidation state is different, fine. So nickel in its 
ground state, atomic state, the configuration is like this. 3D8 and 4S2. Let's represent it. 3D8, 4S2. This is its ground state. Fine. Now, in order to accommodate 4 carbon monoxide ligands, nickel had to vacate 4 orbitals here. Fine. But you see, S is not empty, D, uh, these are also not empty. And so what hint is given to us in this question that this complex is diamagnetic. Fine. So the only one thing which is left with us is to pair these S electrons to 3. Right. So I have again I am uh, explaining here that magnetic behavior is given only then we can represent any complex using BBT. Otherwise, the explanation why S are pairing with the D electron is not given by balance bond theory. Fine. So, anyhow, let's explain. So, here all the D will be fulfilled. S is completely empty. 4 P is empty. So, you can easily explain here S P. 3 hybridization and the shape of the complex is tetrahedral. Fine. So this is cyanide, sorry, carbon monoxide is donating its lone pairs in the four same energy as P3 hybridized orbital. Fine. As a result, you see number of unpaired electron is zero, so the complex is diamagnetic in nature. Fine. So this is a very, very important question. Here, take care in this complex. Nickel oxidation state is zero. It combined in its ground state. So students usually make mistake here calculating oxidation state. Usually they take nickel in plus two oxidation state and then further they cannot solve this question. Fine. So this is one problem. Now I'll take one more problem of the coordination number four and that will finish this topic. So one complex of platinum is there. In this complex we have the question number nine point nine of NCRT. We have to predict number of unpaired electron in one complex of uh, platinum. Number of unpaired electron and given it is given that uh, this complex is a square planar in nature. Its shape is square planar, fine. So platinum oxidation state is plus two. If I write platinum in the ground state its electronic configuration uh, its electronic configuration is uh, 5D9 6S1. I am writing the valence shell only. So, in its plus 2 oxidation state, it will be a case of uh, 3, uh, sorry, 5D8. Fine. So, if I represent orbital representation in plus 2 oxidation state, it will be just like a case of nickel 2 plus. Fine. So, 5 D 6s 6p. So 5d8 is there. Fine. And now in order to accommodate four cyanide ligands, it has to vacate four orbitals. Three we have S and P which are empty and it is given it is square planar. So it is very simple to answer. The complex hybridization is known, DSP2. So obviously there will be pairing and one of the D is empty. Therefore, it will be a hybridization like this. 